what's up my people my ride share drivers of YouTube this is the Zen this is the Zen video this is my ride share channel or channel my ride share show where I talk about ride share driving I am an artist and musician I'm living in San Diego and I do the ride share so let me talk to you about it um, first off before we go too much farther I just want to tell you a few things about me real quick Subscribe to the channel if you could. I'm working on getting my channel up to a thousand subscribers. I'm like 170, 60 something away from doing that. So help me out. Help a brother out, right? Also, I um, released some new music. My band, The Zim and A-Rock. We put out a three song EP. You can find it on Bandcamp. So check it out. Love it if you did that for me. Thanks a lot. Um, and also, check out the podcast. I'm doing a daily podcast about... A lot of things, some of it is rideshare driving. So I update you every day on what I'm doing rideshare wise when I'm driving rideshare. So that's that. We got some shout outs this week. Like I said last week, I'm going to get back to the shout outs. So this is everybody that's commented on the rideshare videos on this channel since last week. Um, and they're, you know, I try to keep them fresh, the new people, because there's a lot of old people that have been with us for a while. But thank you very much. Um, and a couple of them actually commented last week. So for this week, I'm going to be shouting them out as well. We got John Hathenza, or Hathenzada, I Frosty, Toby S. Wish, Michael Andre, Andreda, Bubba in LA, Danny Drayman, and then um, Jokes on You and Jay Ramos, our 77, have been with us for a while. So thanks a lot for, um, and, you know, I guess welcoming me back. Um, I got some good pos positive uh, feedback and comments that people are, Happy that I'm back doing this video. Alright, so let's get into it. Um, as always, I have two boxes on the side right there that indicate at what part of the video we're in. It's either how much I made or the main topic. And um, So if you want to scroll ahead to the main topic, feel free to do that and watch the color of the box change it. Also, in the description of this video, I will put the timestamp on when the, ch the, new, the main topic happens or the much of a topic happens so you can click ahead to that that's only on desktop I don't think it works on I don't think it works on mobile but maybe it does who knows I forget I don't know um so let's get into it shall we I'm not sure what else I have to mention so I guess we'll just start this how much I made that's how much I made this week I made I'm getting deposited in my account one thousand eight dollars and fifty nine cents yeah um, as you can see in the heads up display, it has twenty dollars more that than that because I got twenty dollars in cash tips. Speaking of tipping, this week I made one hundred and six total tips, um, which is below my ride numbers. I did one hundred and twenty rides this week, um, and as you know, maybe you don't, maybe you don't. I feel good about my tip count when I make at least a dollar per ride, and I was under that amount. So, what's up, San Diego? Come on. Last week was great. This week, not so much. Um, so I feel really good about what I made this week. Let's get into the daily breakdown. That's what I made each day. I'm pretty good each day. Um, I feel really good about what I made because of the amount of hours I put in. Forty. If I can, if I can break a grand in under forty-five hours, yes, that's what it's all about. That's sustainable. That feels good. And now that I'm in my own car again. Uh, and it's a newer car. It qualifies for power driver bonus. So, you know, the rides I made like 840 bucks, but I got a $160 bonus because of power driver. And from my perspective, the way that I do the job, getting that, it was 105 rides and um, 105 total rides with 45. I can't remember. Maybe let's put up the shot right there, the screenshot of the power driver bonus, the, the section that... I involves me because there's it's kind of a big picture so I'll just put up the part that involves what I did which is 160 bucks 105 rides 40 or 45 peak time rides I felt I'm mean, obviously as you can see in there I got like 60 peak time rides and I did 120 total rides because once I hit that power driver bonus I still wanted to bake break a grand so I just kept driving until I got a grand based on what I would make that week and that's awesome if I can make a like I've been saying for a while if I personally can make a grand a week at least a grand a week off this job that is amazingly sustainable especially if it happens within this 45 or less hour app hours per week I, get, I feel like I have a pretty good system 
here's the date, the hourly breakdown of where I drove. I had a question recently. Um, I don't know if it was on Instagram or on YouTube here, but somebody asked me where I drive. And this is the times of day I drive. I, I avoid the middle, like at noon hours pretty frequently. Even on weekends, you know, you can get away with driving all day on Fridays and Saturdays and Sundays, but Fridays it still dies down at like the noon, be 11 and 3. Um, Saturday it dies down a little bit in the afternoon, but not as much as it does on the weekdays. And on Sundays it dies, in San Diego anyway, and this could be different for every city, but in San Diego it dies at 3. So from like 3 to 6, it's weird, it's a different, it shifts up. So that's what I've noticed, so that's kind of where I tend to take my breaks, because I'll be talking about this on a future video, but the number one thing that I feel is important to know, especially if you're going to be a new, you're a new driver, you're still trying to figure out the job, don't, especially if you're a full-time driver, don't work when it's slow because you're just fatigue yourself. It's no good. So anyways, that's what's going on there. I did, as you can see as well, my heads up display, display I broke 8,000 total rides, which is pretty cool. I was going to make an 8,000 ride video when I was not making these videos, but now that I'm making these videos again, um, now you know, 8,000 rides, yay me. Um, what else? So that's it. If you have any questions about how, what I made and how I made it, feel free to ask me in the comments. And I will let you know, I'll either maybe direct you to an old video I've already done or just answer your question in the comments. I love doing that. Comments are my oxygen. So comment, even if you want to just say hi, I'd love to hear from you. Um, what else? So we're into the main topic. I don't think I need to snap for the main topic, but now we're in the main topic. Um, so basically the main topic today is the Express Drive Program Exit Review. So I was in the Express Drive Program from... May 2017, basically the beginning of May, all the way through G the end of June, like June 19th, I think it was the day I turned in the car, um, 2018. So over a year, I was in the Express Drive program for over a year, and I feel like I have a pretty good sense of what it's all about. Today, there's two main things I want to talk about, is um, why I left the program, and who I believe it's good for, um, based on my experience that I've done it in what you should consider if you're thinking about using the Express Drive program, the way it exists right now. Uh, I also have made many other videos about the Express Drive program. I might link them up below, but there's like five or six of them. So I might just direct you to the Rideshare playlist on YouTube. You can go to the videos tab, find the playlist, or there is the link to the YouTube Rideshare videos playlist. And you can just scroll down and look for any ones that have Express Drive or Rental in the pro in the title, and you can learn more about what I had to say on the whole thing. I did one video that was like forty minutes of like really comprehensive, like just nitty gritty, getting into the program and like what to expect going in. But now that I've been in, I'm just gonna kind of wrap up my experience as best I can. So let's get on to it. why I left the program. The main reason I left the program was I felt for me it became unsustainable. It became Basically, too hard to continue doing the Express Drive program and feeling like I feeling good about it. The main reasons why for me that it is obviously I'll, when I talk about who it's good for, I'll talk about this some more. But my situation was I was using the Express Drive as my main car, like my main job, my main everything. It was like I am driving Lyft as my main everything, and the Express Drive program was good for a while. When I first started, so there's another factor involved here, like the demand in San Diego has gone up, which has been great. So between the time I started in May versus till today, the demand has definitely gone up for rideshare driving in San Diego. The, um, and so at the beginning, I was putting in about 50, I'll just say 50 hours a week. And you can see this in my older videos because like I just showed you what I made and how long it took to make it. I've been doing that since I started this video series, and you can see that I'm telling the truth. It took me close to 50, usually around 50 hours a week to achieve the rides I needed to do to make the top tier, um, what I say, discount on the rental. Lyft calls it a bonus, but for me, it really is more like a discount on the rental cost, um, and that makes more sense to me to say it that way. 
Um, so to get the top tier discount, which I also believe for my situation is the only way it's worth it. If you're going to be doing this full time and you're not getting the top tier discount, it's not worth it. You're spending too much time in the car, on the road, and then if you don't get that top discount, you're giving Lyft too much of your money back um, to feel good about it. So that was always a goal for mine. I think I missed the top tier discount twice, maybe three times, but I think I only missed it twice in the entire time that I was driving in the rental program. The other thing, so in that regard, so it was only good to make the top tier discount through the span of time of driving for Lyft through that time, it got better. Like it got, it got to the point where at the beginning of 2018 till about now, um, it got to the point where until before I turned in the car, um, cause they also increased. So what Lyft did was they increased the amount of the cost of the car because they made a mistake. They said they sent me an email that said they made a mistake on the amount taxes and fees were. So the cost of the car went up a little bit. They decreased the amount of the discount. So it was for me, the top tier discount for a long time was $200 off the price of the car. It went down to 190. And then they also increased the amount of rides it took to get there. It was for me, it was 110 rides a week to get the top tier discount went up to 125 rides, a 15 ride difference, which is significant. And I'll talk more about that in a second. But before when I started the job, and went from and was doing it um, from the basically the beginning of this year till they changed the requirements. It became very sustainable. It was like a place where I could get my rides in in around forty hours, sometimes even less. And it was like this is very sustainable. I can maintain this constantly as someone that's doing this job, like do it every single week for and have to get that discount and have to go for that bonus every single week. 40 hours was very sustainable of sitting in the car. So I felt good about that, got to a place that was very sustainable. When they changed the rules, when they changed the requirements, I was like, they announced it. So the week before they changed it, I said, okay, I'm gonna go for the, what their requirements are this week to see what it feels like. So the week before they changed it, I went for it. And I was like, already, it pushed it into the 50 plus hour range. And then the next week, I was still in the car and I was like, I thought maybe I could handle it or something, but it just started to tweak my brain. I just was like, I cannot go back to doing this job 50 plus hours and feel good about it. And so for me, like Lyft pushed it into a place of unsustainability. And it was it was stacking up because where it was for a long time, you know, when you're in the program and you like you're if you're in a situation like I am where it's kind of hand to mouth, it's like I need this week to make it to next week. Every week I have to make it. I don't have any savings. I don't have any buffer. As you can see, my that's why I put the debt up there is because it's all about can this job support my lifestyle in such a way that allows me to pay down the debt and is sustainable and doesn't want to make me go crazy, things like that. So I was kind of tracking all these things. And when it became apparent to me like that it was increasing the requirement, not only in in all the things I just mentioned, but the time in the, on, in the car again, back to about 50 hours a week, I just couldn't handle it. And so that was the main reason why I was like, now's the time to get my own car. And you can refer back to next week's or last week's um, video on kind of more information about my car. Um, but that's it. That was the main reason I left the program. It just, it got unsustainable for me to feel good about it, especially when I knew the experience of being able to do it for 40 hours a week and achieving everything I needed to achieve. So now I'm out. So any questions around that, feel free to hit me up. Now that I'm out and looking back on it and kind of taking the information in based on my own experience, who I think it's best for, if you're considering using an Express Drive program, I think it's best as a short term, six months or less, if you're looking at doing it full time, I think six months or less, because for me, it definitely caught up to me like the that always never having a sick day, never getting a holiday, always every week, no matter if it's good or bad, you always have to be out there driving if you want to get your, you know, best discount on the rental. You just got to be out there driving, you know, be strategic about it, you know, learn your city, do all that stuff. But it, it's, it eventually wears on you. And if you don't have a buffer like I don't, and you don't have the ability to like not work for a week, then, you know, or something or take time off or whatever it may be, it's like, 
it's it's pretty it, it starts to catch up with you it, it caught up with me maybe it won't for you but it did for me and maybe that has to do a little bit with my age i'm 41 um that, or if you're younger maybe you could sustain it longer i don't know whatever or if you have less responsibilities that's the other thing i'm thinking of as well i do not think the express drive program is be good for like someone who has significant responsibilities outside of working such as kids and they need to be places and 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 take care and have their schedule your schedule has to be pretty open because you want to be able to get on the road and be out there when you need to be for the peak time rides and for when it's good because there's times when it's bad and you don't want to be driving and i'm fortunate that i have support with my kids when they were with me my my mom lives with me so that she was able to help out so i could stay out there driving awesome so that's a big part of it and then there's one other um kind of person i think it's good for is if you are if you're have like a a, a four day a week job already that pays a bulk of your bills and you just need a car you could be in this program and do enough rides between like on the weekends or wherever that you can get enough rides in to pay for the rental and have a car. I mean, you need to have at least a minimum of 20 rides in. So that's another scenario where I think it might be a good solution for you. If you have the time to put at least 20 rides in and then make enough to pay for the rental, you won't ever achieve any of the bonuses or discounts, but you'll make enough to pay for the rental. And that's it. That's what I think about, that's my exit review of the Express Drive program. If you have any questions around it, feel free to hit me up, comment in the comments. That'd be awesome. And my, if you found this video because you want to become a ride gear driver, use my referral code ZIM200. And you and I both get a bonus, so you gotta actually start giving rides to get the bonus, but um, check it out, use it. If you want to follow along on this uh, more frequently, not only that podcast I mentioned earlier, but Zim, a ride share Zim on Instagram is a great way to do it. So do that. And I wanted to ask you a question. Um, tell me in the comments, if you want to play along, your best rideshare experience so far. What has been your best rideshare experience? A uh, good tip, uh, I don't know, good conversation, meeting somebody. What has it been? Comment, let me know, and yeah, that'd be awesome. All right, until next week, be excellent to each other, and may your rides be long and your tips be big.